In an interview with the New York Times, Tom Perez argued that New Hampshire and Iowa should no longer be the first two states to vote in the presidential primary, saying, quote, a diverse state or states needs to be first. The difference between going first and going third is really important. We know the importance of, a, of momentum in Democratic primaries. So joining us now to discuss John Nichols, national affairs correspondent at The Nation. John, pick this topic especially for you because you were there. You were in Iowa <laughs> during that whole mess and you were on this show talking to us. So give us your general uh, assessment of the situation. Now Democratic leaders for the first time are able to break the shackles of Iowa. What state do you think that they're going to pick? A lot of eyes on Nevada, which was a very good state for Bernie Sanders. So that might take it out of the running for what they pick. <laughs> what do you think? Well, you're exactly right. And I'm yeah. so glad you remember our conversation of yeah. a, you know, not much more than a year ago. Yeah. When we uh, when we were trying to explain the crisis in Iowa. And it's important to understand, uh, Iowa dealt itself out of this thing. They, they have had not just one cycle, but two cycles where they had an incredibly conflicted, messed up Democratic primary or Democratic caucus. Uh -huh. uh, and there's always such a mess that, that they've, they've got to stand down. So where do you go? And this is I know that Nevada is making a big move. Their legislature has taken steps uh, just in, in the last few days. Uh, to move their primary up. Now, they've got a challenge because New Hampshire will never give up its first in the nation status. And that's going to be a, a brutal battle, I promise you. But um, if we accept that there may be an alternative, right, that some other state may come up, I like Nevada. But I also have to say that I think there are other states that ought to be considered. I would point especially to Michigan and mm -hmm. Georgia. Yep. And I, I point to them because they are both battleground states. They both have large African-American populations as well as growing Latinx populations. They are simply more diverse states. And frankly, uh, I think they give their bigger states, which I think give a little bit more of a, of a measure of where the party is. So while I've got nothing against Nevada as a candidate, I would also point to Georgia and, uh, and Michigan as places that, that might well be considered. That's a great idea. Do you think that the order matters as much as it once did? Because, I mean, this time around, Bernie won the popular vote in Iowa, won New Hampshire, won Nevada, and still obviously, you know, lost in what was a, a route ultimately to Joe Biden. So do you think, and that had never happened before, by the way, where they win all three of the first states and go on to lose. So do you think the order is even as significant as it used to be? Well, I think we should ask President Buttigieg. <laughs> uh, yeah. because of course uh, although it was very conflicted it, it, technically they gave him the, the win in Iowa um, and the fact of the matter is that certainly the order is not always definitional but I do think it matters and and here's the subtlety and, and this show perhaps understands this what I'll, I'm about to say better than any show uh, the order matters because when you are challenging the elites, when you are trying to upset the establishment in the party, uh, having those initial wins are, is, is a really critical thing to kind of building momentum and making something happen. We saw it less in 2020 because 2020 will stand out as an anomalous uh, presidential primary and caucus season because of COVID-19 and a number of other factors that came into play. Right. But if you look at 2016, when Bernie Sanders, as an example, came from nowhere, right? He was, he was not, he was not uh, even treated seriously in the fall of 2015. That strong showing in Iowa, that win in New Hampshire gave him tremendous momentum going forward and i think it was a big deal so yeah i do i do think order matters so that's the interesting thing then john because if they understand that order matters then i mean if i'm them i'm probably gonna pick georgia like you said or nevada because if you can see uh well uh, that's actually my other question how much impact does a democratic establishment have here on who goes first or is it actually going to be up to the states like you said new hampshire you know there'll be a war before they give up their first in the nation status but can the Democratic establishment, can Jamie Harrison and them actually have an impact whenever it comes to this? Absolutely. They have a lot of power. Yeah. And this is something that needs to be understood. Uh, the Democratic National Committee, uh, which Jamie Harrison now heads, 
uh, has a, a tremendous authority as regards assigning delegates. And so what they can simply say is if you go before a certain date, you can't have your full delegation or you can't even have delegates to the convention. That's a fight that we saw in uh, way back in 2008 when there was a conflict between Michigan and Florida and some other states over who got counted and when and how. And so uh, the DNC and, and frankly the RNC has a lot of power in this regard. The outlier is New Hampshire because New Hampshire literally has it sort of written into the, into the stone there that their secretary of state will move the primary. And in fact, they've actually said if they had to move the primary to the day after the previous presidential election, they would do it, right? right. So they're, they're always going to fight for their ground. If we understand that, maybe we don't like it and maybe the – at some point, the DNC might actually say, well, then we're not going to give you delegates or something like that. But if we understand that, then the question is, are there what, how's the border for the rest of the states in that zone? And, you know, how does it come together? And the answer is that the DNC has a, a very definitional role in this regard. And this is a dangerous game because uh, we want to make sure that it is a small d democratic process. The weird reality is that. New Hampshire and Iowa kind of came up by chance, by, by luck in the past. But if we go back to you know, a little bit more ancient history, if we go back to, say, the 1960s, what you'll see is that, a, a, frankly, a better mix of states. You had Wisconsin, uh, historically, was always a really critical primary in 1960 for John Kennedy, in 1968 for Eugene McCarthy, in 1972 for uh, George McGovern, mm -hmm. and, and even 76 for Jimmy Carter. So, you know, there were other states that were in the mix. Then the DNC came in. And frankly, the truth is the DNC came in uh, to try and establish a, uh, a route up, if you will, that was not necessarily encouraging to, you know, challenging and dissenting candidates. And so this is something that needs to be watched very, very closely. Now, I wrote a book called The Fight for the Soul of the Democratic Party. And the truth is... We often think of a fight for the soul of a party as an ideological battle. Often, it's a structural battle. Yeah, and that's it's true. about how sure. they structure their processes. And finally, John, Sorry. it's my impression that the reason that we have corn in like literally all of our food that you buy in the grocery store is essentially because Iowa comes first. I mean, seriously, I mean, that's part of the dynamic is these are the states that get pandered to and promised to more than any other states in the country. Just talk a little bit about that piece. Absolutely. Let me I'll use one word, ethanol. Uh, you know, oh. I mean, would any American even know about ethanol <laughs> if it wasn't for the Iowa uh, caucuses? Of course, you know, this is this is the dynamic. And and, you know, we probably even buy maple more maple syrup because of New Hampshire. But the, the truth of the matter is that, um, unfortunately, this is the reality of our politics. Caucuses and primaries. I think we should get rid of caucuses, by the way. And so primaries. Um, uh, are big money. These are in industries unto themselves. They bring hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, both in advertising, but just in you know on the ground operations into states. And so states actually now compete for it as you know an economic development booster, if you will. This is fine. I understand it, but at some fundamental level, there really ought to be a big pause, and it ought to come right now. And the members of the Democratic National Committee and the people who put pressure on them ought to focus at this point on establishing a nominating process that raises up the great mass of grassroots Democrats and lets them have a real say in this process that makes it less of a political industrial complex and makes it more of something that actually is reflective of you know where the base of the party is. Because you know something? The base of the party is usually closer to right about the issues and the politics than the leadership. Very yeah. true. Very John, well great to have you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, John. Honored to be with you. Mm -hmm. Hello, more rising for you after this.